I was never a pro mandate. Uh, but in the beginning, I thought the vaccine was a miracle. You know, I was proud of American industry for coming up with this thing so soon. And the first version of the vaccine seemed seemed like the best one because there was, I believe, still some measure of protection, protection against the spread uh, of COVID. And so that particular vaccine worked fairly well against the, that original version of COVID. And it's just gone steadily downhill since then. And so now I've got some serious questions about efficacy about dangers, yes, side effects from the vaccine, but also what are we doing to our immune systems and other other body bodily systems when we take the vaccine that won't prevent us from giving, getting COVID and then we get COVID. So now you've had at least a double shock to your immune system. <laughs> When you're doing your show every day, uh, are there moments of uh, of frustration or is it just pure like you're just getting the information in and you kind of comment on it and talk to people or does it wear on you ever? Because I'm like sort of, for the most part, I'm pretty much enjoying the show and all that stuff. But every now and again, like I was on, as we're taping this now, I was on your show earlier today and it's like this Kamala thing with the communities of color and the equity stuff, it, it really was getting to me. It really was. Like maybe that's a little bit of the the new father thing. Like I'm feeling this like need for the next generation suddenly in a new way or something. But like these, these are just horrible ideas and mm-hmm. bad people. Yes. And these culture wars in particular really upset me. And the COVID overreach really upset me. The longer it went down, the thing that made me the maddest I've been in probably the past two years was the the shaming of parents who wanted the masks off their kids. Like you haven't done your part. You don't care, you know, about society and the old people. And it's like, we've done our part. Our children have done our part. This has been an absolutely senseless exercise, what you're doing to these kids. And finally parents had to stand up and basically raise the middle finger and say, it's on whether we're Democrats or Republicans, it's on. We're showing up at your school board meetings. We're we're going to rhetorically torture you until you listen to us. And you can call us terrorists. You can send the FBI in. We don't give a fig. We're not going anywhere. I felt it. So many parents felt it. And we won that battle. That that's That's why Glenn Youngkin won in Virginia. And it's why the Democrats almost immediately abandoned those positions. They recognized they were all going to suffer the same fate as Youngkin or the Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, who only won by two or three points, who's expected to win by 30. They got it. And there's a reason the reason those kids don't have masks on there in the schools right now. And that it's because of the parents. That stuff fires me up when when the weak or the vulnerable or the smallest among us can't fight for themselves. And the kid thing was really annoying because you had people like Randy Weingarten, like, they're resilient. They don't complain. They're little. They don't know how to give voice to this stuff. Like, they're not loudmouths like you or me. We're here for them. Randy Weingarten is the enemy. I'm sorry, but she is the enemy of children. And she has to be identified and treated as such. And frankly, Dr. Fauci is in exactly the same camp. So I'm so glad you just said that because that's where I was going to go. What do we do about these people? I am not one for jailing our political opponents and I don't (laughs) want to throw them in gulags and all the things that they probably want to do to us. But when you look at somebody like Randy Weingarten, who's now taking the reverse of all the positions or claiming that she took is taking the reverse of all the positions she had for two years and Fauci, who, you know, uh, not wearing masks at a baseball game while telling us to wear masks, all the stuff. Everyone knows all the stuff. What, What do we do with these people? Like publicly, what, what, what should happen? They need shamed over and over and over. And I really think this is one hopeful thing about the Republicans taking the House, which we believe they will. Uh, I mean, it would, it would take a massive disaster between now and the election day for the Republicans to lose the House. But um, they're going to investigate Fauci. And I know he went out there and said, like, I'll consider it if they play nice. You know, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the way I was treated before. And I would expect to be treated... You'll show up and you'll sit down and you'll answer the questions or you you will be found in contempt of Congress. That's how this works. You don't get to say, maybe I'll come, right? That's what a subpoena is for. So we could get some real answers if the GOP takes over the House and investigates the COVID origins and more, maybe not more importantly, but equally importantly, the cover up by our public health officials. What the hell went wrong at the CDC and the NIH? And how did they become such huge behemoth godlike institutions in the eyes of the media and the liberals to where 
their quote science TM could not be questioned because it's still happening, Dave. I mean, I, I'm preparing for a big interview that's going to hit soon and I'm neck deep in this right now. The vaccines and the information about the damage that the vaccines are doing versus their efficacy is dark. It's, it's not turning out the way even vaccine proponents like yours truly wanted it to. Why is it being buried? Why can't we talk about it? Even journals like Science and Nature and um, New England Journal of Medicine are starting to release the studies showing that there's a real risk in taking the vaccine and then you get COVID after you've taken the vaccine. Th these are dark times. They can take you to dark places. And there's not an acknowledgement by people like Fauci. He still wants vaccine mandates. Th they refuse to acknowledge that the vaccine doesn't stop the spread. And yet we're still imposing the mandates as though they do. And then endangering people who get the vaccine, who don't need it, who then will probably get COVID anyway, because it doesn't protect you from getting the transmission. So you're really messing with your immune system in dangerous ways. They won't acknowledge it. The only answer is public accountability, uh, an outcry. W wasn't it also amazing how it's like we had this federal mask mandate on the planes and then one judge in Tampa is like, no, no, no more. Everyone takes the masks off the next day and there's no spike in COVID. There's no sudden outbreak on a plane that's you know taking it over to Europe or vice versa. And, but we don't really like stop and acknowledge that. Like, boy, they just the week before Fauci was like, yeah, we should extend it on the planes. Yeah, I know. God bless that judge. And yeah. some people, even on the right, some lawyers I respect ripped her opinion. I was like, you know what? It's a great opinion. I totally agree with it. Um, and it stood. Right now it stands. And we've yeah. been fine. We've been fine. I don't think the masks are going to come back. I really don't, except for in like really crazy leftist cities, maybe New York City, you know, maybe LA. Um, I don't think they're coming back because people have seen with their children how damaging that is. You know, they, I still see people in the New York area riding around with a mask in the car by themselves. <laughs> but I think for the most part, we're done doing it on a mandatory basis for children. The vaccine mandate, though, it's still in a lot of places. I think you said before that you were a vaccine proponent. Does that mean that you're not a vaccine proponent now? Yes, it does. Um, I was never a pro mandate. Uh, but in the beginning, I thought the vaccine was a miracle. You know, I was proud of American industry for coming up with this thing so soon. And the first version of the vaccine seemed seemed like the best one because there was, I believe, still some measure of protection protection against the spread uh, of COVID. And so that particular vaccine worked fairly well against the, that original version of COVID. And it's just gone steadily downhill since then. And so now I've got some serious questions about efficacy, about dangers, Yes, side effects from the vaccine, but also what are we doing to our immune systems and other other body bodily systems when we take the vaccine that won't prevent us from giving, getting COVID and then we get COVID. So now you've had at least a double shock to your immune system. There are questions about what it actually does, if anything, to DNA. There have been denials and so on, but more and more information is starting to come out now, as you would expect. We're two years into having the vaccines and you can't trust the American public health services. They they have only one mission, which is to push more vaccines on us. You have to start getting your information from the UK, from Sweden, some, from Finland, uh, from Israel. Like there are countries who are taking honest looks at this. Sadly, we're not one of them. And by the way, every country you just mentioned, I mean, they're making mistakes too, right? Like even you can get your information from pretty much everywhere. And even then it's like, it's hard to tell what's true. But I don't trust the people who never revise their opinions after new data comes right, in. Right, right. You know, and I mean, seriously, like there's now, uh, like in, in the UK, you're not supposed to, they're not recommending the vaccine. They don't, they won't give it unless there are special circumstances to kids under 12. Here at our school, uh, there's a mandate in place. Now it doesn't kick in until you're 16, but there are still school systems in the country where you have to get it at, under age 12 or you're expelled that's what's happening in Washington, D.C. They just had to hold off on it because it was going to lead to half of their population. And that's a black school population yep. Yep. that wasn't going to be able to go to school. So they cared about that. Right. But they're mandating it now for young people when we really have no idea whether it's actually going to lead to increase in cardiac events for young children, myocarditis and beyond. I featured friends of mine, Dave, on my show, friends of mine uh, who I got to know at the beach, their 17 year old son died suddenly of a heart attack, of a heart incident caused by myocarditis. He wasn't sick. 
he had COVID and he had the vaccine and the family doesn't know. They don't know what led to his death, but he was perfectly able-bodied five months after he got the vaccine and about a year after he had COVID, he died of myocarditis. There's just been too many incidents like that. And if you look at the rise in cardiac events amongst young people now, um, it's disturbingly high and it seems to follow. If you look at the graphs in these magazines, I've so these are like far left or far right magazines. Um, they follow spikes in the vaccination rate. They don't follow spikes in COVID, like the outbreak of Omicron. It's not like all the cardiac deaths were mm-hmm. happening then amongst mm-hmm. the young people. They have been following the increases in vaccination rates country to country. So look, it, all of that disturbs me and gives me pause. And as a journalist says, I want to know more. I want to know more. And I know where not to look. I will not look at Rochelle Walensky or Anthony Fauci or anybody at the NIH or the WHO. I mean, Fauci just gave another grant to Peter Daszak's group, EcoHealth Alliance, another yep. 600 plus thousand. It's going to go up to 3.3 million to do more bat coronavirus research in China. These are the people that we're looking to for answers? No. So I'm still looking for the perfect advisor, but I know that they're overseas. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about the media instead of nonstop yelling, check out our media playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out the full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.